Welcome back to Speak Easy. I am still Paul F. Tompkins, my guest today. You know him most recently as Merle Dixon from The Walking Dead, but you know him from a billion other things besides. Please say hello to Michael Rooker. Mr. Rooker, thank you for being here. Right on. Cheers. A pleasure Cheers to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll start us on our journey. Yeah, right on. <laughs> The Walking Dead, this is your first time as a series regular on a TV show, right? That's right. Has this brought you a different um, a different type of fandom than you've had previously? Because people, there are some people that really are into zombie stuff, like way into it. Are you now getting people running up to you in, in a store that you wouldn't normally have happen? Now, normally, people don't run up to me. <laughs> I don't appreciate when people run up to me, especially from behind, sure. running up to me from behind, or even from the front or side. Sure. I, I, I frown on that. They can walk up to me anytime they want. That's polite. No running. Absolutely. Please. The fan base is crazy, and, and we have, you know, preteens and 90 year olds. Right. Everybody is involved in this show. Everybody who could potentially be a zombie enjoys watching mm -hmm. zombies. If you're a religious man, I mean, it, it is, it's second life, babe. Sure. You, you <laughs> Absolutely. will rise again. Absolutely. Prior to this, what would you say you, you were probably known most for just out and about in the world? Well, you know, the, the diehard fans are the people who've been fans of mine since Henry, Portrait of Serial. Which is the first time I ever saw you. you know, yeah. yeah, and yeah. That, that's, that, that got uh, rave reviews and stuff. I ultimately decided I must have liked that movie because it provoked such a, a strong feeling in me that I felt like the filmmakers have done their job in, in making me feel uneasy and feel... Um, uh, really uncomfortable and, and uh, uh, um, afraid, you know, of this movie. When you read a script like that, is that a thing that's important to you? Or is it something that you don't think about while you're making the movie? Or is it something that you don't even think about at all? You just go for the role. You know, I think the producers think about that kind of stuff. Right. Maybe they, they try to force the director to think about that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But the actors, I, I, I try not to even worry about that kind of shit. You mm -hmm. know, I, I just do my job. I go in there, try to make it as believable as possible and, mm. and not not scare the hell out of my co-workers too much right you know and that was my first film too really my so I was scared shitless to right. be perfectly honest with you right I wasn't sure about this film business you know I was a theater guy I I didn't know all about this you know shooting out of sequence stuff it was really right. truly the first really the first role that I ever had with any sort of through line so. did it did it stay with you for a while after you after you wrapped? Uh, I've been asked that question a couple times and it, it does. It's, mm -hmm. it's with you during the shooting and mm -hmm. it's with you after. The spillover was that I, I discovered that actually I, I'm, I'm quite a, a introverted person. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. <laughs> true. That can't be true. I know. <laughs> it's, tr it's true. It's like <laughs> I found myself not wanting to talk. Right. I mean with being Irish it's like what the hell's going on with me? Exactly. I can't take this anymore. I want to talk. I want to go to a pub and I want to talk. I want to have a fight, God damn it. And so, yeah, yeah, I was like sitting in the corner, uh -huh. quiet, my head down. It was sad, it was sad. And, and you know, when people would approach me, I would grab them and smash their heads into the table and walk away. Do these people run up I to you? I wouldn't even talk to them. Did they run up to you? No running. We've established the rules. No running. They no had running to, up to my They had to tiptoe. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you care about what you do as an artist, yeah. you know, it's a job. And you, you know, you have a living to make. You've said that there's stuff on your on your resume that you have done in order to make a mortgage payment or, you know, uh, uh, pay a bill or something like that. I have these jobs that I've done that uh, I, I categorize them as my roof job or my pool heater job right right you know you, you, there's something that you need and you you haven't worked in a couple of months and mm -hmm. I was like oh shit I gotta do this job because I gotta fix the roof right yeah 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 so I think we've all done that now you're at a point where you can afford to be a little pickier with the stuff that you do is this a period that you're enjoying where you can maybe be a little choosier about the roles that you take on I've always been kind of choosy mm -hmm. you know even from day one I was offered at least a half dozen things like Henry after mm -hmm. 
Henry had came out and, and right. well, it took a, several years for it to come out. Yeah. But yeah, I, like I, four I, years, right? Yeah, yeah, I was offered other things after that after the movie came out, and I was like, oh, no, 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 dude, I'm <sighs> gotta move on, okay? Right. <laughs> yeah, I gotta move on. That shows you the creativity of Hollywood at work. Walking Dead. Uh huh. Merle, one-handed. I got offered a job where the guy had two prosthetics. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I got the script and the dude has two prosthetic hands. And not only has two prosthetic hands, he's a, he's a sniper killer. And they can't figure out why they can't find fingerprints for the cat. <laughs> I said, well, let me think about it. I just, wanted, I just wanted them to know that I was thinking about it. I didn't want to be too politically correct and say, fuck no, are you <laughs> fucking serious? I feel so torn now between hoping that never gets made and really wanting to see it. I regret that I turned it down. <laughs> I'm kind of mad at Two you right now. <laughs> prosthetic hand. Are you serious? How do you think they saw I you? I would have done the job just to keep the prosthetic hands. It's not a roof job right. or a swimming pool fixing the pool job. Yeah. This is a prosthetic hand job. That's right. Well, that's... <laughs> Did I say that? It's, said, it's been that's, said. That's a little scary. It's been said by you. Yeah, double prosthetic hand job. <laughs> Never mind. I'm gonna abandon my thought. Move on. While you were filming uh, uh, Walking Dead, uh, was it the most recent season, you were also doing uh, the Call of Duty video game? That's right. And so in your downtime from Walking Dead, you're flying uh, from Atlanta to go do voices. <clears throat> and did you also do motion capture stuff for? The first season, on The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks saw it, a, a producer saw it, and he was friends with the folks over at Activision and Treyarch, and he suggested that I should, you know, be in this game. Mm -hmm. And the game was called Call of the Dead. It was me, uh, Danny Trejo, uh, Cher Michelle Gellar, and Robert England, and right. we play ourselves. Right? Oh, you play yourself? Yeah, we play, yeah, you get to play as Michael Rooker. You get to kill zombies as Michael Rooker. So we're killing zombies like, you know, crazy and that's what the, that's the game <laughs> right so they enjoyed my work so much they hired they basically hired me called me up asked me to do uh, the new uh, black ops 2 game mm -hmm. and I play a guy named Mike Harper on that game and they used my likeness as well in that game as well and, and um, made me younger there's another game coming out uh, that's you and that's Merle and um, and uh, Daryl from Walking Dead. I, I, I'm i sorry. Let me correct you. Please. Daryl. Not Daryl. I do apologize. I know the writers Smurl are writing Daryl. Sure. And they, they have a little problem writing Southern, okay? <laughs> right. You know, I, I should be getting credit for rewriting Southern. Because you are the role. genuine article. Oh. Well, sometimes. That's right. Depends on how many of these I've had. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's, it's Merle and Durrell. There you are. Good. Do you do you? <laughs> Merle and Durrell. Hell They're yeah. out there hunting them zombies. That's right. Uh, and you get to play as the uh, as the brothers. That's right. All right. In looking at your uh, your resume and your IMDb page, I notice there's not a lot of comedy. It's very rare that we see you do something that's just a straight up, flat out comedy. That's is right. that is that a choice for you or is that something you wish you would be asked to do more? No, no it's not a choice. It's not Because you're choice. like a jovial guy. You're, yeah. you know, you're, you're not afraid to joke around and no, laugh. No, no, I'm not. I, I really enjoy uh, I, I, mall rats with a comedy. Right? Yeah. I, I've done a few. Mm -hmm. Not too many. You're, you're only as good as your last project and, and that's usually what they see you as. So right. I, I foresee myself playing zombie killing motherfuckers for the, I mean, excuse my language, for the next three years. But, but you're saying you wouldn't mind doing some more comedies? I would, I would Somebody, love to do more comedies. Like, play on the record, uh, Michael Rooker, play on the record. comedy, why not? Funny. I love physical comedy. Pratt Falls and yeah. such. Oh yeah. Were oh, you I, grew, I grew up watching like uh, 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 Three Stooges mm -hmm. and, and, and Laurel and Hardy and these teams, mm -hmm. not really single. Right. It, it, back then, it was a lot of teamwork. Mm -hmm. You still have that today. Mm -hmm. So finding Absolutely. the right, the right partner mm -hmm. is probably important. Is there somebody you can think of that you would that you would love to do a comedy opposite? I'm not even sure if I'm the straight guy or the crooked guy. <laughs> <laughs> crooked guy. <laughs> I don't, a, I don't know a lot of these a, terms. What is it, the comedy? You've got a straight, <laughs> straight guy, guy and, and you've got guy. the crooked yeah, guy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know which one I am, you know? Maybe I'm the guy that gets hit over the head all the time. <laughs> right. 
you know, with a frying pan. Right. Rooker, right. shut up! Boom! <laughs> There was a lot of there was a lot of slapping people in the face in those days, That's right? In those comedies, the whole banana thing. Yeah, it was just a routine thing. People yeah, just yeah, being yeah. slapped in the face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael, I would like to uh, just name some of the movies that you've done, and just give me some quick impressions of those films, if you would. Above the Law, starring Steven Seagal, his first film. You played Man in Bar. <laughs> do you remember much about the filming of Above the Law? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, we shot it in my neighborhood. My old oh, neighborhood in Chicago. There you go. And every crew member had a pistol in his back pocket. That's what I remember about the show. <laughs> they were so afraid of my neighborhood. They were so afraid of where I lived that all crew had a pistol in their back pocket and they were showing. And this is in Chicago, okay? My mm. guys didn't like that. My oh, friends didn't like sure. that. Sure. You know? Absolutely. And, and what they, neighborhood was that? And Division Ashland, Milwaukee Avenue, near North Side <laughs> Chicago. But yeah, that's the, that's the one thing I remember that, that popped in my, my head. That's sure. Like, I was appalled. I was really yeah. taken back by it. And it's like going into some place and, and you're expecting trouble and you're expecting people to treat you badly. Right. Nobody wanted to treat anyone badly. So. You sure it wasn't protection against Steven Seagal? I don't know if a gun would help you with Steven, you know. <laughs> Mississippi Burning, you played Frank Bailey. One of the greatest directors, Alan Parker, that I've ever worked with. I started out that, uh, that film as a group. Mm -hmm. Thugs. Right. You know white trash, KKK thugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alan right away picked me out as, I don't know why, but he wanted me to do all the violence. <laughs> Hanging, burning, beating, raping, pillaging, everything was, everything that was bad, Frank Bailey, I think the character's name mm -hmm. was, got to do. Eight Men Out, one of my favorite movies. You played Chick in that movie. That was pretty early on in your career as well, That's right? right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, and you've said it's one of your favorite movies. One of my favorite yeah. movies, yeah. yeah. We got to uh, play baseball all day long. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I Are you a baseball fan? A uh, big baseball fan. Mm -hmm. My, uh, You know, my my sister, I, I borrowed 40 bucks, her last 40 bucks, got in my car, paid my gas way to audition for that movie in wow. Indianapolis, so. Uh, Did you pay your sister back? I, God, I don't think that. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I gotta call her now. <laughs> I don't think I ever paid her back. I gave her a hug. Does, that, does that count? That's currency and family hey, talk. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Absolutely. Sea of Love with uh, Al Pacino and Ellen Probably the Clark. only man alive that had, had the opportunity to mount Al Pacino. We spent, <laughs> I spent three days laying on top of Al Pacino's butt. It's like, and finally on the third day he was like, he looked up to me, he goes, Rooker, can you give me, I can't breathe. <laughs> it's like, I, I realized that I was just hanging out. <laughs> laying, laying there with all my 205 pounds on Al Pacino. And he just looked, he just looked up and he's like, I can't, I can't breathe, man, I can't breathe. I said, like, oh, oh my God, I'm sorry, bro. So you just gotten so used to doing yeah, it. Just so used to like hanging out on top of Al Pacino. <laughs> Days of Thunder played Row <laughs> Rowdy Burns. There is some crazy stuff in that movie, dude. That was the w some of the most fun I've ever had. It did have. It would and have to be. I right? gotta tell you, Tom Cruise, cool, awesome mm -hmm. guy. Absolutely. He's very competitive. Mm -hmm. Every time they'd call us to set, mm -hmm. we'd race. Boom! Out the doors. The doors would fling open, and we'd be running through the parking lot, up the hill. And he even put a climbing rope in. We'd have to climb the rope and drop back down. And I'd kick his ass every time. Uh, and he hated it, right? He hated it. Oh, he hated it. Was the racing his idea? Well, we, it, we were competitive sure. no matter what. Right. You know, that we were playing competitors uh, in the show, so we figured we'd compete in, <laughs> yeah, the whole racing right. thing, yeah. It was his idea. The role of Hal Tucker, of course, from the movie Cliffhanger. Yeah. This is all about mountain climbing. Uh, was this a thing that you were into at all before doing this? You movie? know what? No, no, no. I never climbed. But I, well, I, I did a a, um, a little climbing when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so that's it. Mm -hmm. So when I got the job, they said go train. So they got me this climber. So we'd go out to Joshua Tree and we'd climb for three weeks and come back. Mm -hmm. And the, oh, the movie's not going in, it was put back. So it was put back several months. And so I just kept training and training and training. I felt good, man. I was, I was like one finger, you know, I was like climbing up, you know. You know, I was actually pretty good. 
And uh, I got to Italy. I'm going, going to go to the rock face for the first time, climb, just do a little training, stretch out, you know, show off a little bit. Ten-year-olds. And I'm like, <laughs> and they're like climbing past me like it's nothing. It was sad. I was like, I was blown away. I, I went back, I went back to my hotel, got a drink, sat down, and said, I'm never climbing again. <laughs> Mall rats. You played spinning in Mall rats. Thought I was too old to play spinning. Producer convinced me to play spinning. <laughs> said we'd dye your hair. I said, fine, okay, okay, fine, dye my hair. Went in, spent five hours trying to dye my hair. Turned my hair orange, burnt my scalp. I was so pissed. Knocked on his door. I said, what do you think? He saw me and said, oh my God, yes. That's, that's gonna work, that's gonna work. And I'm like, good, good, good. I closed the door, went to my room, got my shaving. I shaved my head right away, instantly. Came down the next day, nobody had knew, nobody known I had shaved my head. Right. I had like toilet paper all over my scalp from, from With cuts. With a razor. From cuts. I was so pissed off, I shaved, I cut my head at least a half dozen times. I went over to, everybody's in shock, went over to, uh, to Kevin Smith, said, Kevin, uh, Mr. Rooker's here and would you like to look at his hair? And so Kevin looked up from his Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> and back down to his Game Boy. Didn't care, didn't care. It was perfect, ended up being great for the show. Tombstone yeah. played Sherman McMaster's. That's right. It was a great shoot. I've been shooting guns ever since. Really? That's what got you into shooting I guns? I shot a little bit beforehand and mm -hmm. I trained a little bit beforehand, but right. truly, I bought my first set of guns on that sheet. As a matter of fact, I have, I still have them. They're single action, uh, Western style pistols, and I've gone on and, and gotten other types of uh, firearms and stuff. Now, this, I heard the story where you you had uh, uh, hunted, um, I guess, like varmints, you know, your skunks. Oh, your God. No, like no, that. not the skunk story, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, I heard the skunk story. Who, who'd you t who told you? I have my James sources. Gunn told you that? I have, I have my source. That scum sucking pig. He's so. in big trouble. <laughs> I was, please, please, please explain to me elaborate. what happens during this story. I go to James Gunn, we're gonna play cards. We, we have James Gunn the director. Cheese and, yeah, he's yeah. a director, writer. We have cheese and wine every Sunday, you know. Very used, civilized. Used to, right? <laughs> Used to. Yeah. <laughs> Until the skunk situation. Anyway. The, the skunk incident. They're in there, it. they're playing, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's quiet, and I come up, I sneak up to the window, and I bang on the window. And, and then I jump up the stairs to go inside, and I feel this mist over my body, like as if I'm in a, an amusement park and I'm, I'm being cooled down by the, the, the cool, watery mist. Almost refreshing. Yes, right? yes, yes, until I realized I had just been skunked. And my glasses were all steamed over with skunk juice. And I realize it and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, shit. And I start to go up the stairs again to get inside, and I, I get skunked again. Oh, and I look twice. Down, and I look down, there's a little, there's a little, her down there squirming around, I'm blocking its path, it can't get out. I open the door, I run inside, right? I run inside, as soon as I open the door, everyone at the table goes, oh, God, a skunk! And I start cursing the skunk, and I go, I'm gonna shoot the little fucker! And I go to shoot, <laughs> go out. I wasn't gonna really shoot it, I was just pretending. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly. And all of a sudden, in the background, I hear, oh my God, he's got a gun! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now wait a second. You're mad at these guys from above the law that come to your neighbor in Chicago. You're going to a wine and cheese party and you're packing. You never know. You know, at a game, at a gun party, you, you know, you gotta bring a gun. So you, did soak, you did the soak in tomato juice and the whole thing? He ran down to the store, got tomato juice, got baking powder, and oh, so baking what powder. What we ended up doing, not baking powder, it was, yeah, baking soda. Baking soda. Baking soda. I had two girls took me to the bathroom, ran a bath for me. So I got in the bath, and they put tomato juice in there, and I, I had, like, my underwear on, okay? Don't get no, sick on This is all above board. Don't get, yeah, Absolutely. above board. Yeah, oh, of course. Right Michael Rucker, thank you. A pleasure to chat with you. My pleasure. Uh, that's it for Speakeasy this time. Join me again when my guest will be a different person. This is our day. We did it. Two to two. Skunks. You know what I'm saying? Bring them on. Skunks. I'll take it. I'll find it.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check back every Monday to see who I interview next. And for more info about Speakeasy, visit MadeMan.com.